Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I shall walk you through my design process for the Experimental Materials Project. This project was divided into two phases. The first part of the project brief was given at the start of the first phase and we were required to develop our own organic materials using methods and tools which we also had to develop on our own. The organic material would then be used to develop a product which was later revealed at the start of the second phase of the project so stay tuned to find out what it was. Anyways, let me now take you through my journey of how I arrived at this biodegradable sensory toy for toddlers. I started the process off by collecting information about organic as well as biomaterials. What stood out to me was that there is actually a difference between bio and organic, which I didn't know before doing, which I didn't realize actually before doing this research. The distinction between them is that biomaterials consist of living cells from microorganisms like algae and fungi, while organic materials simply don't. I also looked at some of the methods currently being used for plastic manufacture as well as forms in which plastics and bioplastics are available. I also researched problems surrounding plastics and bioplastics so that I could use this to inform my material experimentation in some ways. For my experiments, I used maize meal, gelatin, oats, brown sugar, brown rice, glycerin, water, and vinegar to come up with four different organic binders. I then mixed these binders with other organic materials such as sawdust, dry flowers, and grass in varying ratios. This resulted in 20 different material swatches with different properties. Some were hard and brittle, some were flexible, and others never dried or cured, even till this day. <laughs> Anyways, after the material experimentation process, the task which then followed was to identify a problem. This problem had to be solved using our developed materials and through an innovation that would either design out pollution, keep products and materials in use, or regenerate natural systems. The problem I identified was with the toys industry. Surprise! <laughs> it's a massive one, and inexpensive, vibrantly colored plastic toys which have short lifespans are almost and are almost impossible to recycle account for 90% of its market. In 2018, 370 million pounds were spent on toys in the UK alone, which is pretty hectic because waste from non-recyclable plastic toys contributes to landfills and ocean plastic. My chosen direction of innovation was then developing sensory toys for toddlers because that's quite a large market and having biodegradable options would help with the plastic situation. There are wooden options available but I found out that they are actually more expensive and not as accessible to everyone which is problematic because sensory toys play a major role in early childhood development especially for toddlers with autism. Moving on to my ideation phase, I started off with design ideas which were very much on the thick side. This meant more material would be used and since I had chosen casting and press forming as my manufacture method options, these designs would likely take very long to dry. Therefore, to avoid long lead times, I started steering towards ideas which had thinner components. And so yeah, that's how I arrived at my third concept. Um, my third concept developed the idea of using thinner components and by borrowing ideas from my first two concepts and combining them with the third one, I managed to develop something I was happy with and was ready to take into CAD. However, before doing that, I used mock-ups to test out a few ideas for textural patterns because my intention was to have 
a different texture on each puzzle piece to enhance the tactile experience of the toy design. I then took the concept into CAD and that is how I arrived at this outcome. A biodegradable low cost sensory toy set for toddlers which is especially designed for sight, tactile and cognitive development. Well, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for watching and for staying till the end.